Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. If you are from New York and you love brownstones, then you must know the Brownstone Boys. They are a duo who renovates brownstones here and we're gonna see their home here in Bed-Stuy. Hi, I'm Barry. I'm Jordan. We're the Brownstone Boys and welcome to Bed-Stuy, Brooklyn. So before we show you guys the entire house, we wanted to start here in the entrance. And this is where you can see a lot of the original features of, of the home. This new post in particular was just covered in layers of white paint. And truth be told, we actually thought we were stripping our woodwork to repaint it. Everything looked so beautiful that we couldn't paint it after we stripped the paint off. So we wanted the entryway to be as clutter-free as possible. And in order to do that, what we did is we built a custom um, coat nook over here. So this is just a really nice place for us to keep our uh, winter coats and some jackets. And that way we are not seeing it right in the entranceway. Guys, this tour is a little bit self-serving because I have been following the Brownstone Boys for a while. These guys are famous here in the city for renovating brownstones and showing their entire process. Thank you so much for reaching out. We're like, so excited to I'm have you. I'm so excited. Now this is a brownstone that was renovated by you guys top to bottom. Yes, absolutely. It was a pretty big project. Also, first brownstone. Um, and so it was, the, it's our like, you know, it was our kind of testing ground. It was our like experiment. That's probably why you guys are in high demand <laughs> and your first house is your showpiece. So let's get started. So when we first walk into this brownstone, what some people would start off as the living room, you guys made the dining room. A little controversial. It is a little controversial. <laughs> it was a big debate. <laughs> it was a big debate. Big Instagram debate too for us. Yeah, people really were adamant about us putting the living room over here. Or not. Or yeah, exactly. Yeah, like, but I mean, it won. But we kind of took the opposite approach. So for us, it just made perfect sense to put the table in the front of the house, and it's a little further from the kitchen, but. It's just if you draw a line right here, it's the perfect dimension for a table. Uh, this is not a good dimension for a couch and a TV and everything that you need to have a living room. And with the fireplace being here, you know, it, it kind of creates this section and that section. And for us, this just made more sense. So this plan in the corner, really big showpiece. We wanted something big to fill this space. This is a bird of paradise. Um, Jordan and I kill plants like crazy it we, we really try struggle but this plant has looked beautiful and it's right in this window this is south facing so this these windows get a lot of light all day and so this plant has just thrived in the corner right here this table is custom um we had this made by a furniture builder uh really beautiful just slab of wood um, that he put together it also came with the bench and these chairs are mid-century modern vintage chairs that we got on Etsy. So this piece of art has been with us for about 15 years. I found this canvas on the streets in Brooklyn. And one night I was really bored in my apartment and I decided to do an art piece. So I just made this with egg crates. It's also gone through about seven different iterations of paint colors. I think the blue in here works. Unfortunately, our place, all of our fireplaces were covered up, leaving no original details. Someone on social media reached out to us and said they had an extra marble mantle and they were wondering if we were interested. We of course said yes, they delivered it and Barry and I installed this and now it looks like it's been here for years and years. So this is in the middle of the house is where we have our living area right now. And this was when we bought this place, this is where the kitchen was. It was actually really weird the way it was set up. And they put a, a bedroom here in the back. So what we're gonna do is open this up. So this is all living space. They have the kitchen built in right here, right now. Um, so we're going to remove that. Um, this, this will be the living area, dining area, this big room here. All of these walls back here are going to come out. Um, this isn't original anyway, so we don't mind taking it out. Um, but we wanted our living room to be here. Really, I mean, the main reason is it's a little embarrassing, but we, we like TV. We like to watch TV. We like our Netflix. And we really wanted the couch to be opposite the TV. One of the difficult things to figure out in a brownstone that you're restoring is HVAC because of ducting and things like that. So we installed a mini split system. So we have one mini split unit here. Uh, it cools the entire room very easily and it's kind of tucked away out of sight and blends in as well. So let's just do a quick buy of where everything's from in our living room. Starting with our media console, this is just your traditional West Elm buffet table. Then we have this beautiful uh, coffee table, and I believe that one is from... Haystack. 
Haystack. Hay needle, haystack. Yeah. This was a vintage piece that we got off of Etsy and it's been with us for quite some time. And then our couch, we got custom from Joybird and we just wanted something really comfortable, snug, and something that we can relax at the end of the day. We are in the heart of the home. To have had the kitchen over here, you had to make this completely brand new. But this was a really important space for us. Like we didn't, you know, we wanted it to be open. We did have to take down a wall here. There was a bearing wall that we had to put this beam up for. Um, there was a bathroom that was in this area, but it was really important for us to have this big open space. You know, this is where everyone comes as soon as they come in our house. It's like the hangout spot, It's the hangout sure. spot, like big time. One thing I want to talk about is Barry, you bought an apartment in downtown Brooklyn years ago, and then you sold that property, and then you bought another property, an apartment, right? Yeah, it's a condo. And then you sold that property, and you used that money each time to put together to, for obviously both of you, put together to buy this property. I wanna mention that because I think sometimes we get caught up in the bigger prize, like the bigger building, the, most, the yeah. more expensive one, but there is a strategy that you can use, whether you knew it or not, right? Where you can start with a smaller property in a place that appreciates in value, realize that appreciation and use those profits to be able to buy something bigger. The way I did it was I bought a, uh, a condo in downtown Brooklyn and lived in that place for two years and then I sold it. Of course, it had appreciated a lot by the time I sold it. Um, and then I took that money and bought another place that actually needed renovations in Park Slope. And I totally renovated it, made it really beautiful, where you walk in and say, this place is beautiful. So I took that and bought two apartments. I lived in one and rented one out. Oh, wow. And then I sold both of those. And then that's when Jordan and I bought this place. So I had my money from all of those transactions. It's pretty much where all of the money came from that I, I invested in the place. It's easier to think it's not possible. It's such a big number but maybe starting off smaller and building up to that is a good way to do it. And plus, when you're buying buildings, brownstones, townhouses here, you all can always have rental income. So in the city, that can be quite a bit of money. So what we have did in our place, and we recommend this for a lot of our clients, is we went really inexpensive on the actual cabinets. So these cabinets are just really simple, pre-assembled, uh, shaker cabinets are from a company called the RTA store. Get an inexpensive cabinet and then use upgraded hardware. Um, so this is an upgraded hardware from a company called Buster and Punch. Yeah, so we went with upper cabinets. However, this one we left the cabinet front off. Uh, we kind of flipped it horizontally and just now we, it's big open shelf. And then we just put a white oak shelf up here, an open shelf that kind of replicates the white oak from the other side of our kitchen. We were considering opening up the entire back of our building, but we got the cost from the structural engineer and we were like, nope, that's okay. These windows will do just fine. Um, and it's really nice because now we have natural light coming in through the space with these really tall windows. And this was our phase two project that we worked on after our kitchen was built, but we did need some additional storage to hide the vacuum cleaner, hide all of our messy stuff. So we installed these DIY um, open cabinets and also closed cabinets. And now we have this beautiful storage system. So during our renovation, we also added a deck to the outdoor space, which is really nice because now we can kind of utilize this space for our own and our tenant has the space underneath for her own privacy. Uh, this is leading to our backyard. Don't judge us. Right now it's a hot mess. It's we're, winter. <laughs> it's it winter. was winter. It's, you know, we're coming out of the cold and we need to do some work back here. <laughs> yeah, but uh, as you can see, we have the material. So we're going to get to work on gardening and make this the outdoor oasis it deserves to be. Before we go upstairs, why don't you guys go downstairs and say hi to Kimberly, our tenant who lives on the ground floor of our house. It's a really good perk to when you own a, a two family brownstone in Brooklyn that you do have that rental income. So go check out her space and then we'll take you guys upstairs. Hi, I'm Kimberly. I live in the garden apartment below Barry and Jordan with my dog Domino. So I've lived in this apartment since September 2019 and I moved from Washington Heights where I had lived for 14 years. When I came in here I really loved the open layout of the apartment and it was very spacious. I really love this kitchen because it has a decent amount of countertop space and also 
a dishwasher too and it's one of the more compact dishwashers so when you're living alone these are actually very more a lot more convenient so i'm taking you to the bedroom and it's one of the brightest places in the apartment you'll see the windows are south facing so a lot of light comes into the bedroom which is really nice to wake up in and you know read and have coffee so this bedroom is great because it can still fit a queen size bed so you'll see that i have the light coming in from the front and then as you walk into the open space it will lead you into the living room and into the backyard space and this is my favorite part of the apartment where everything just opens up and it feels a lot more airy. So in the living room, I wanted to kind of go, still play with more color, um, but go with neutrals with the furniture. So this chair I've had from my old apartments and then the um, day bed is a new acquisition along with the console. So a lot of storage pieces had worked from before into here the futon is from herman miller so i wanted something where it was simple and minimal and the artwork i just finished myself so <laughs> it's still in the progress of being completed but yeah that's a mix with textures and knits that i just did this is my area of the office um, one of my friends actually studied and does feng shui so I gave her a layout of the apartment because I wanted to know what areas of the apartment would benefit me the most and this section she said is more suited for my work section so it's good to put whatever you do for work in here and to be prosperous. Thank you so much for coming and visiting my space and hope you come back to Brooklyn soon. So we covered the parlor floor and now we're gonna head upstairs. You'll notice as we go up that quite a bit of noise and that's because we did not change. These are the original stairs and they act as our alarm systems. I was so happy when I came here because you guys added my absolute favorite color. Yeah, we love pink too. When we first had this place, there was a door here to leading to the roof. So we were like, this is the first thing that you're gonna see as you walk in the house. Right. And we knew it needed to be something different. So we just kind of flipped it around. We put the door over here and then we just built in this area a recessed niche. So this is our little sanctuary in the back of the house. We love the window with the trees right outside here. A lot of people struggle with furniture placement because of the old fireplace bump outs. So what we did was it was sort of off centered in the room and it wasn't really big enough to put the bed on. So we just made it bigger. We just extended it. So we just built the wall out and created this backdrop to our bed. We painted it a different color, so it became a little bit of a feature. So in New York City, it's quite the challenge to get enough storage space, but here we have our his and his closets. We worked with California Closets on this project, and we really love that there is enough of space here to just hang all of our shirts. And a lot of people want a walk-in closet, and some, you don't always get more space out of a walk-in closet. Like the, It could be configured awkwardly where you get it takes up more space and you have not as much hanging space in closet space. So this is a good solution. This gives us, we almost feel like we have a walk-in closet, but it's taking up a much smaller footprint. So this is our primary bathroom and it is a small space. However, it is more than enough space for the two of us. We have a double vanity over here and this was custom made. Um, what we did is we just used our leftover quartz from downstairs in the kitchen and we just did a double vanity sink over here. And then we carried the floor tile all the way up into our primary shower. It's kind of has his and his sides. So we have double uh, shower fixtures over here. It just kind of ties in the whole design all the way through the shower space. So welcome to the brightest room in the house and that is our guest bedroom. This is now one of our favorite spaces in the place and we added this huge skylight which just gives so much natural light to the space. We had to kind of meet the city's requirement in order to call this a technical bedroom with the light and ventilation code. But our solution for that was just adding this skylight. So we get our light from this window and our view is on the wall over here. This was done by one of my old co co-workers and good friend, Lauren Kalen. And we kind of just wanted to play in since there was no view in this room. Uh, we wanted the view to be on the wall. So this is our office and den study, I guess you could call it. Our miscellaneous it's room. Miscellaneous room, you know, it's like where we can get some privacy, you know, because we work together and we, work, we, we live together. And so we have a little separate space. 
So this room has a lot of the original beautiful details, including the picture frame molding over here. A really nice touch, decorative molding. And now we started adding this decorative molding to most of our projects too, just to kind of get that original feel into the space. So this door is a DIY project that we did in our renovation. It is a door we just got at a salvage yard. Um, we cut the panel for the glass out of, out of this area. We got this glass from a, a shop that sells this kind of like vintage looking chicken wire glass. So we knew we wanted something vintage and we knew we wanted something New York. And to achieve that, we ordered a brand new clawfoot tub. This is a new one, so it's half the weight of the old school heavy ones. We got this from Kingston Brass. We did our uh, custom hex floret tile over here. Um, and this just screams to us New York City, which we love. And then we found this amazing uh, apron front sink over here as well too from a vendor on Etsy. And we just really love the black underneath to tie in with the hex florets. All right guys, that completes our tour. Another bed home in the bag. So if you guys wanna learn more about these guys, their projects that they're doing, if you love brownstones, go to their page because they are renovating brownstones. They even renovating a Manhattan loft. Yes. I saw a video. Yeah. So, so many projects that they're going to be working on. If you want to keep up with them, where can they find you? Sure. Instagram is always a great place. Uh, our handle is at Brownstone Boys or we're new to YouTube as well and getting a lot of advice from Naisha the pro <laughs> um, and also our YouTube channel is just at Brownstone Boys.